Peltier is a senior portfolio manager for Trivest Wealth at Wellington Altus Private Council. Martin, thanks for joining us. What's your assessment of the state of affairs in the markets right now? Well, everyone's trying to figure out what uh, the next steps are. We've had a heck of a run in the last uh, three months here. And so naturally, people are saying, well, maybe there's some better value opportunities elsewhere outside of the U.S. And, uh, and then there are those who do the opposite, saying there's momentum in the U.S. and you probably want to stay there. And so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of trepidation as to what the Ford outlook is. But if you look historically, April has been a, a strong month for markets with uh, the TSX being up over 75% of the time, and the S&P being up over 84% of the time. So there's just... Maybe spring is in the air and, and people are quite optimistic and, and at this time of year. So you still want to probably stay long. And when you think about portfolio construction right now, because you, you kind of just said it there, everyone is debating where you want to be in the market if there is momentum in the market. So how are you thinking about that? Yeah, and so you have to be careful. So uh, there's been a lot of uh, people chasing, for example, European markets and uh, given the underperformance relative basis to uh, the S&P 500. But if you look at the concentration of the, uh, of, of the actual indices themselves and the types of companies within those indices, um, and all the, the megas are, are still dominating in the U.S., but financially, uh, they're doing very well. U.S. corporate earnings uh, really blew away expectations in, in the first quarter. And, and so there's a lot of of strength in the U.S. economy and uh, being reflected in U.S. stocks. So you probably still want to be there, but you still want to maybe offer some downside protection and and, uh, and do a little bit of hedging uh, if you've had uh, participated, lucky enough to participate in, in, in the last uh, three months gains. And so you could use some of those profits to uh, maybe buy some puts or uh, look at other ways of, of offering some downside protection, giving away a little bit of uh, the gains that you've made. All right, let's go through some individual stocks that you brought to the table for a conversation today. Uh, the theme of infrastructure and big projects globally. There is a Canadian name that uh, has leaned into that in a big way in Brookfield, and they have one of their publicly traded uh, business units that is specifically focused on infrastructure. What is it about the makeup of that business that catches your eye? Well, uh so there are times you want to be forward looking instead of backward looking because if you look at the last 10 years it hasn't been a very good sector to have invested in the reason being was 10 years ago uh interest rates were a lot uh, significantly lower and there was a lot of uh public assets public uh, pension plans and and other uh other vehicles that were chasing infrastructure assets especially in the uh energy transition space and leveraging up and so the project economics were not as favorable. And so that's coming home to roost right now. But if you're looking forward, a lot of that money's gone out of the market. And Brookfield has been fortunate enough to raise a lot of money. And, and uh, with the competition uh, being uh, withered down, uh, the project economics are looking quite favorable. And interest rates are probably not going to be where they're at right now in the next uh, five or 10 years. So if you're a long-term investor, um, you want to be able to position to take advantage of that. And so you have to choose the, the, the horse that uh, uh, that you want to ride. And, and I think Brookfield's the case. You know, they're focusing on three main areas, digital infrastructure, uh, reshoring and, and, and manufacturing and energy transition. And those are all sec segments of the market we like. And you saw Ballard's announcement uh, uh, today on, on hydrocells. And I mean, there is still the ongoing energy transition and, uh, and you know, Brookfield's participating in that. Well, the uh, energy transition is worth watching, but we're also watching what's happening, broadly speaking, with energy prices and especially oil having a pretty solid first quarter performance. When you think about investing in energy-related stocks right now, are there any example businesses that come to mind? Yeah, so our, I mean, we, we just, we, we're risk managers, so we want to look at the maximizing the return per level of risk. And so our top two holdings, Suncor and and CNQ have just done phenomenal. I think Suncor is up 35% over the last 12 months, so it's just done phenomenal for us. Uh, we keep uh, asking ourselves whether we should trim it back, and we haven't, and you know, that's been a good thing. But if you're looking at, at, uh, at, at where the opportunities are in the energy space, in the mid-cap sector, it just has, not, has no interest. There's no institutional interest whatsoever, and uh, retail investors have, have kind of had enough with it and run out of, pa uh, run out of patience. And so. There are a few names in there like Tamarack Valley and Baytex that we've been picking up 
and uh, we see a near-term trade opportunity. I mean, these companies are trading at two to three times uh, cash flow uh, compared to a C&Q and, and Suncor, they're trading six to eight times cash flow. So uh, you're getting them at a substantial discount. And if oil prices just stay where they're at, they don't need to go higher or maybe even down a little bit. Um, and investors get a little bit more confidence to go back into that mid-cap space, there could be some significant returns in, in some of those stocks. Final question to you on what are called structured notes. That's something else that you've been um, working into the portfolio. Can you explain how it works and, and, and how you go about uh, leaning into different stock ideas through structured notes? Yeah, and, and so a structured note is a, is a vehicle, uh, it's considered debt, uh, from, from a tax perspective, so you have to be cognizant of that. But basically, it allows us to participate in the equity market with substantial downside protection, um, depending on the client's uh, risk tolerance. So we can offer downside protection from 25 to uh, to 100% principal protected. So uh, you know that no matter what happens, you're probably going to get your money back, uh, very likely, depending on, on the range of the outcome. And then, you know, you can exchange that for capped upside with yields anywhere from 8 to 12%. Um, or you can have uh, vehicles that allow you to participate fully to the upside with downside protection. So it's just another vehicle, like I had mentioned previously about the S&P 500, if you wanted to participate in the S&P, but you're just a little bit anxious about the concentration risk, uh, the strong move that it's had, and uh, you're not too keen on bonds or buying long-term bonds um, because it's just done terrible in your portfolio, well, you know, maybe this is an, a nice route to go, especially within registered products. So um, it's just another vehicle that we utilize in the alternative space to, to provide a little bit of comfort for our clients. Martin, 